Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The Lion versus the Eagle of the English Civil War, Israel against Rome. Ancient and Modern Britons. The Cavaliers, they were the ancient Britons, and they were the royal aristocracy of England. And the Roundheads, they were the commoners of England, and the modern Britons. And these two groups were the subjects of the book by author David McRitchie, Ancient and Modern Britons. Therefore, when you have two kinds of people, the Cavaliers, the aristocracy, and the Roundheads, the commoners, the serfs, occupying one country for many centuries, England, the one living as peacefully as possible, serfs and farmers, encouraging industry and learning, they were unable to bear arms and religion and making laws to foster the growth of these the other continuing generation after generation to rob and murder at every opportunity the dynastic family feud of the aristocracy was killing them off and when you know, as we do know, with regard to Scotland, that the former party gained more and more, the roundheads, the commoners, the serfs, century after century, the direction of the government of that country, they eventually gained the commoners, the roundheads, gained the government of the country of England. You cannot but see that the ultimate ascendancy of the ideas and laws denotes a racial victory because there were two kinds of people. The English Civil War ultimate results was a racial victory for the Roundheads and the modern Britons. The ideas and laws of the victors is liberalism, the dominant idea or philosophy of the modern world today. Two kinds of or different type of people occupying one country. Two different kinds of people and customs and and manners in two different types occupying one country England now they were also two types of social classes or groups the bourgeoisie and the aristocracy And 
in the time or days of the English Civil War. Two different ethnic types, the Scots and the Romans. The question that most requires to be settled or answered is this, of what ethnic composition were the townsmen or bourgeoisie of our chief cities like London at this period? Villains, another name for serfs, we know were once serfs. Were these villains or serfs the descendants of early Britons of peaceful modes, farmers or villagers, or were they incoming traders or merchants of almost recent centuries, or were they a blending of both? They were the children of invading and colonizing Romans. The question is of great importance because these villains or serfs are the people whose ideas are much more prevalent in this country today than the ideas of the ex-nobility. Etymology, bourgeoisie, the modern French word bourgeoisie, derived from the old French bourgeois or bourgeois, town dweller, which derived from bourg, market town, from the old Frankish burg, town. In other European languages, the etymological derivation included the Middle English, Burgess, the Middle Dutch, Burger, the German, Burger, the Modern English, Burgess, the Spanish, Burgess, the Portuguese, Burgess, and the Polish, Bourgeoisia, which occasionally is synonymous with the intelligentsia. In the 18th century, before the French Revolution, 1789 to 1799, and the French Ancien Regime, the masculine and feminine terms bourgeois and bourgeoisie identified the relatively rich men and women who were members of the urban and rural third estate, the common people of the French realm, who violently disposed the absolute monarch of the Bourbon king, Louis XVI, who ruled 1774 to 1791, and violently disposed his clergy or priest and his aristocrats or nobility in the French Revolution of 1789 to 1799. Hence, since the 19th century, the term bourgeoisie usually is politically and sociologically synonymous with the ruling upper classes of a capitalist society. In English, the word bourgeoisie, as a term referring to French history, refers to a social class oriented to economic materialism. Materialism or material things are the chief goals in life and hedonism, pleasure is the chief thing in life and to upholding the political and economic interests of the capitalist ruling class. Corporations are above government. Bourgeoisie, town dweller. Bourgeoisie revolution or the revolution of the middle class. The group just beneath the king and aristocrats of the feudal system. Bourgeoisie revolution is a term used in Marxist theory to refer to a social revolution that aims to destroy a feudal system or a system where the nobility and the king's rule or its vestiges or anything to do with that system anything to do with the customs and traditions of the aristocrats and nobility and establish the rule or rulership of the bourgeoisie or the middle class and create a bourgeoisie capitalist state the dutch english american and french revolutions 
are considered the archetypical bourgeoisie revolutions. The Dutch, English, American, and French Revolution were revolutions of the middle class in that they attempted to clear away the remnants or whatever was remaining of the nobility and aristocratic system of the medieval feudal system so as to pave the way for the rise of capitalism or corporate above government. The term is usually used in contrast to proletarian. Proletarians were beneath the middle class. They were the labor class. The term is usually used in contrast to proletarian revolution and is also sometimes called a bourgeoisie democratic revolution. Now, the Dutch, English, American, and French revolutionaries were the bourgeoisie, the middle class of Europe, who fought against the kings, aristocrats of Europe, who were Israelites. The bourgeoisie, the bourgeoisie is a class of business owners and merchants, which emerged in the late Middle Ages, originally as a middle class between peasantry and aristocracy. They are traditionally contrasted with the proletariat by their wealth, political power, and education, as well as their access to and control of cultural and financial capital. They are sometimes divided into a petty a middle, a large, an upper, and ancient bourgeoisie, and collectively designated as the bourgeoisie. The middle class of the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages were the bourgeoisie. They stole the wealth, the lands, and intermarried with the aristocracy and stole their political power. Today, they are known as the 1%. The bourgeoisie, in its original sense, is intimately linked to the political ideology of liberalism and its existence within cities, recognized as such by their urban charter, municipal charters, town privileges, and German town law. So there was no bourgeoisie apart from the citizenry of the cities. Rural peasants came under a different legal system. Many of the original bourgeoisies were serfs and villains who escaped serfdom by running and fleeing into the cities where they received certain rights and privileges. The peasants of the Middle Ages came under a different legal system where certain rights and privileges were not given to them. So liberalism is a sort of political philosophy of liberation of freedom from serfdom. The political ideology of the bourgeoisie is liberalism. Liberalism. Liberalism is a political and moral philosophy based on the rights of the individual. Serfs didn't have individual rights. Liberty. Serfs did not have liberty. Consent of the governed. Serfs did not elect their leaders. Political equality, right to private property, the lords own all the lands, the aristocracy, and equality before the law. Liberals espouse various views depending on their understanding of these principles, but generally support private property. Serfs did not own private property. 
market economies, individual rights, including civil rights. Serfs did not have civil rights and human rights. Liberal democracy, secularism, you had to be a Catholic. Rule of law, economic and political freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly. The serfs did not have any of these. And freedom of religion, constitutional government, and privacy rights. Liberalism is frequently cited as the dominant ideology of modern history. The dominant modern political ideology of today is liberalism. Freedom from serfdom. Freedom from the aristocracy and nobles. So, who were the bourgeoisie? This is the question that David McRitchie is asking. The question that most requires to be settled is this. Of what composition or ethnic composition were the townsmen or bourgeoisie of our chief cities like London? Cities at this period in time of the English Civil War. Villains or serfs, we know were once serfs. Were these villains the descendants of early Britons? of peaceful mode, villagers or farmers, or were they incoming traders or merchants of almost recent centuries, or were they a blending of both? Who are these villains? Who are the bourgeoisie? The question is of great importance because they are the ruling class today, because these villains are the people whose ideas liberalism are much more prevalent in this country, England today, liberalism, than the ideas of the ex-nobility. Who are the people, the bourgeoisie, who were they since they are the ruling class today? Who were they? Who are they? Franks, Romans, feudalism, and doctrine. An interplay between theology and society by John S. Romanides, an Eastern Orthodox priest and scholar. Table of Contents. Number two, Roman revolutions and the rise of Frankish feudalism and doctrine. Romanides explains the rise of the Germanic Frankish Kingdom of the Franks, feudalism, and territories that were formerly controlled by the Roman Empire. But the Romans fought back and initiated revolutions to fight back against the Germanic Frankish kingdoms. The Germanic Franks were the nobility, were Israelites. And number six, the Frankish counterattack. The answer to the Roman revolutions were to put the Romans in total serfdom. The Romans became villains or serfs in Europe and Britain in the Dark Ages. Romanides came to the conclusion that the Roman Empire was conquered in three stages. First by Germanic tribes who became known as Latin Christianity or Roman Catholics, Franks, who were Israelites. Second, by Muslim Arabs in two directions, one from 
Spain, the Moors, the second from the Near East, under their prophet, Muhammad. And finally, by Muslim Turks or the Ottoman Empire. Number one, Germanic tribes conquered the Roman Empire, Franks, Anglo-Saxons, Latin Christianity, or Roman Catholics. Number two, Muslim Arabs in the Near East and Moors of Spain. Number three, Muslim Turks or the Crusades and the Ottoman Empire. These are some of the lands of the Western Roman Empire. Number one, Britain. Number two, Germany. Number three, France. Number four, Spain. Number five, Portugal. Number six, Morocco. Number seven, Algeria. Number eight, Tunisia. Number nine, Libya. Number 10, Switzerland. Number 11, Austria. Number 12, Italy. These were some of the lands colonized and conquered by the Romans, the Western Roman Empire. John Romanides, the Orthodox priest, continues. The reason for this is that the conquerors, the Franks, the Anglo-Saxons, who were Israelites. The reason for this is that the conquerors of the West Romans, including the Britons, used the church, the Roman Catholic Church, to suppress the Roman nation. The conquerors of the Western Romans, including the Britons, who were Western Romans, used the Roman Catholic Church to control the Roman serfs, even the Roman serfs in Britain. This is the reason the bourgeoisie, who are the children of the Roman serfs, have deep-seated hate for the Roman Catholic Church today. Protestant Christianity was their alternative choice because it's less restrictive to their world view. Carolingian feudalism or Slavery of the Romans under Charlemagne and the Franks had its origin in the need to prevent the disaster which had overtaken the Visigoths in Spain. And that disaster was the Visigoths lost Spain to the Arabs and Moors because their Roman subjects helped the Moors and Arabs take over the cities of Spain. The Franks were obliged to develop and extend the already existing system of controlling the Roman slave populations. Their goal was to keep the Romans subjugated and pacified, first in Austria, which is Germany, and then Nostriasia, which is France, and then elsewhere in Gaul, which is France, and finally in northern Italy, as circumstances permitted. Federalism was established to control and subjugate the Romans in Europe and Britain. This is a map of the kingdom of Charlemagne, the kingdom of the Franks. And the red circles are Austriasia, which is Germany, and Nostriasia, which is France. These are some of the territories and lands where the Franks subjugated the Romans. This area, formerly part of the Western Roman Empire, became the territory of the Franks. And the Romans who lived in these areas became serfs and villains. And this is a map of 
Roman colonies in the mid second century after the Emperor Trajan. Each point and dot is a Roman colony. Ancient Roman cities and colonies in Spain and France and Britain and Italy and Greece and North Africa. Ancient Roman cities. The Romans colonized Europe. In that red area, Britain. Britain was a province of the Roman Empire. Province of Britain. Provincia Britannia. Province of the Roman Empire. From 43 AD to 410 AD. Province of Britain and the Roman Empire. This map is from 125 AD. And its capital, Londinium. Or today, we call the place London. Now, we are starting to get into the study of the ethnic composition of the bourgeoisie of England and Europe in the Middle Ages. The villains and the serfs, their ethnic composition, the question that David McRitchie asked. This is from the Sydney Morning Herald by Nick Collins. They came, they saw, they procreated. Legacy of Britain's Latin lovers. At least one million British men may be descended from the Roman legions, which came, saw, and conquered England in Wales almost 2,000 years ago. A DNA study suggests the Romans departed abruptly in the early 5th century, leaving behind relics of their rule, including Hadrian's Wall and a host of towns, roads, and encampments, and obviously children. They came, they saw, they procreated. At least one million British men may be descended from the Roman legions that conquered the country of England. But perhaps the most enduring sign of their legacy is in the genes. The study says, a genetic study of 5,000 people found up to 4 million men in England and Wales carry distinctive genetic signatures that are most commonly found and likely have their origin in Italy. Although impossible to prove whether an individual's genes were introduced during the Roman occupation, researchers estimate the influx of tens of thousands of soldiers were responsible for at least a quarter of the total. Following their arrival in AD 43, Romans are thought to have accounted for between 4% and 8% of all men in Britain, a much greater proportion than any other point in history. Applying the findings to the whole population, this suggests that 1.6 million English and Welsh-born men carried the Alpine marker. Although many of the lineages may have begun before or after the invasion, the researchers estimate that at least a million of the men are likely to be direct descendants of Romans. The DNA markers are much rarer in Ireland, where there was no Roman invasion, and in Scotland, where their presence was limited to a brief occupation of some southern regions. 
So at the time of the British or the English Civil War, the ruling class, the aristocracy was the Scots. So let's take a look, a little look into the lineage of the Scots, like the Stuarts, King James, King Charles, King Charles I, King Charles II. In the annuals of the Caledonians, Picts and Scots, by Joseph Ritson, Volume 2, from Edinburgh. 1828. Likewise of the Celts on the ethnic composition, and all ancient writers adds that the Highlanders are generally diminutive or short with brown complexions and almost always with black curled hair and dark eyes. The Scots of Britain and the Romans, the Roman invaders were of two different ethnic types. But when the Romans invaded Britain, the cultures and the ethnic types became blended. Romano British culture. The Romano British culture arose under the Roman Empire following the Roman conquest in AD 43 and the creation of the province of Britannia. It arose as a fusion of the imported Roman culture with that of the indigenous Britons, a people of Celtic language and custom. Britain was part of the Roman Empire. Britain was colonized by the Romans. Meanwhile, going back to John Romanides, meanwhile, Roman revolutionary activities in Gaul, the Romans did not want to go under the rulership of the Franks. So they fought back. And it's called Roman Revolutionary Activity. Roman Revolutionary Activity in Gaul had not yet been fully suppressed by the Franks. Within the surprisingly short period of only 22 years from 732 to 754, the Franks had defeated the Roman Arab Alliance, swamped all the provinces of Gaul or France. The Franks took over all the provinces, the Roman provinces or territories of France and had swept into Northern Italy and the Franks also controlled Northern Italy. So they put all these Romans into slavery. This was made possible by the new feudal order, which was first established in Austrasia and Nostrasia. The Roman administrative units of the civitates were abolished. The Roman civil government was abolished by the Franks and replaced by military comitates or military encampments of the Franks. The former free Romans were transferred in mass from the cities of the Romans and were established on a slave labor camps called vele or mansai villages or mansions alongside the other serfs and the romans at this point in time they were called the romans at this time were called villains by the franks which means enemies of law and order because the franks were christians and the romans at the time was also Christians, but the Romans made an alliance with Muslims and gave Spain to the Moors and Arabs. So the Franks were angry and called them, you are villains, you are enemies of law and order. The former free Romans were transferred in mass 
from the cities and were established on the slave labor camps called Vele, villages and mansites or manors. Alongside the serfs, they were called villains, a term which for understandable reasons came to mean enemies of law and order. The Visigoths in Spain were overthrown by the Romans. The Romans helped the Moors and Arabs who opened the city gates to the Berbers and Arabs. The Franks reacted with determination to avoid the occurrence of the same in France. The Franks knew the Roman citizens would also help the Arabs and Moors take over France. The Franks reacted with determination to avoid the occurrence of the same in France, land of the Franks, by abolishing Roman urban society. They basically came to the conclusions that if they allowed the Romans to be free, they will also betray them in France and the Arabs and Moors will extend their rulership into France. The Romans started revolutions to throw off the yoke of the Franks and other barbarian tribes with the aid of the Arabs and the Moors. So they were called villains and put on slave labor camps, villains, enemies of law and order. The British Scots against the Italian Romans, both citizens of England. During the time of the English Civil War, the Romans were the bourgeoisie. They became the ruling class of England and are the ruling class today, the 1%.